So this is the 1660s and onward in uh, New France and Canada. Um, here we go. So when we're Samuel de Champlain tried to uh, start a colony and he was doing a good job. He started Fort Quebec. And as you can see, uh, where's my magic pen? Oh, my. Sorry. You can see when they started, there were 28, moved up after 30 years, roughly 20, yeah, 30 years. Um, it wasn't growing that fast. Uh, New France. The king took control around 1600, 1660, sorry. And you can see that it started to rapidly grow after that. He wanted a lot of population in New France so that um, there would be more resources collected as well as he wanted to settle the, the place. Uh, he wanted to settle the country. He set up the sovereign council to govern. So there was the governor who was in charge of the def in charge of uh, defense, the intendant, which was in charge of day-to-day -day business, and the bishop, who was in charge of, who was the head of the church. So he was the head of the church, and he was he was there to um, make sure that everybody, well, basically that the savages were saved and everybody was still being Catholic. Remember that the Catholic um, church was very important at that time. But all three of these groups made up, or all three of these people made up the Sovereign Council. So that was how France was run at the time. The, the defense was in charge of, that was the, the army. The day-to-day, -day, everyday living was all the intendant. So the intendant was the most important person, in my opinion, just because the governor would have, um, it's like the head of the military versus the, um, the prime minister who seems to be more day to day while the prime minister would be the king anyways. Um, and then the bishop is the head of the church. So was Canada better than New France? It was much, much, much colder and on page 40 of your books. You can see this, but winter gave opportunity. So it meant that boys and girls could go to school because when, when you can't farm from November until, uh, March, that, that gives you a, a, a good opportunity to, um, and it, even, it might have been even longer depending on the school, but it, you had four or five or six months to fill where you had to entertain these kids and keep them off the, off the out of the snow so that they're not just running around and building forts all summer or all winter, sorry. Um, it gave them a great opportunity to go to school. So more boys and girls because girls were, there was no farming, so they had more more opportunity to go to school as well the men opportunities in france were very limited because unless you owned a farm it was tough to become a farmer. you had to lease your land from somebody else and the, the taxes were very high you had to give up quite a bit to become a farmer in france so the life was not good in france um in canada however you could get a parcel of land as long as you could farm it you could get it and you know there were a whole uh, there were a lot of opportunities to make a lot of money and then if you wanted to move up back later you could do that um france was you could always return to france but they were encouraging you to um start a farm and uh start a life over in canada the pr the problem was there was no women there were no women in in canada so the government had to fix this, which they, they brought of the fee de roi, um, the, the daughters of the king, which were a whole bunch of homeless and orphaned girls in France, and they'd ship them over on boats to New France so that they could help populate the, the country. So they were they were torn up from their from whatever they had in France and they were they were forced to go live in New France. But you know, it made the the men stick and arguably they had a better life because of um a higher higher level of equality and and um but most importantly education boys and girls could go and get educated in france instead of being pulled out um women were doing because there was not enough population women had a higher um women, women had a higher need to become involved in farming and day-to-day -day life instead of just making the the meals and all that they had to do everything so it they were they were viewed a little bit better 
in Canada, in my opinion, than in, in New France. So it was better for women in Canada because of education as well as equality. Um, Jesuits. So the missionaries, the, the bishop was in charge of the, the Catholic Church in New France, and, and one, of that, one of his mandates was to make sure that the savages were protected. Sorry, not protected. Um, they were converted. They were converted over to, to Catholicism. Um, so the missionaries, they were the ones that tried to convert the savages to Christi Christianity. They were the Jesuits, were followers of Jesus, and they were missionaries. Um, because they couldn't do this every day, all day, they, they needed to give these the, the, the savages time to reflect and to decide if they wanted to go as well once they converted people there was nobody left to convert in that certain area so they would they would teach and hold mass in town in their in their free time so the 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 jesuits would actually were in charge of the schools at the time so <clears throat> next the seniorial system i will send a, a, a link as well to this um, to another video that you guys can watch that explains the seniorial system. But the seniors were in charge of land. They were no, they were not farmers. However, the seniors' land, they, was, they were split up. So everybody wanted access to the river right down here. So if you had access to water, you could farm a whole lot more effectively because you need water to grow crops. It's just basic science. Um, so they would have to find farmers which were the habitants. So the, the habitants <clears throat> or the habs would would be in charge of each uh, farm and they would have to make their own house and they would have to, you know, stuff, you, make sure that they were living properly. Seniors were, were in charge of building a mill as well as building a church so that all of them could go to church. Um, they were, the seniors would then be paid from the farmers they would be given some of their crops as rent for the farmland. So some of the harvest would go to the seniors in exchange for the mill, the roads, and um, everything provided by the seniors. If the seniors could not find farmers and were not doing a good job, the intendant would come back and take the land from that senior and give it to somebody else. And then, so it, it was a trickle-down effect that if the seniors weren't doing their job, then you know they would lose their job as well. Um, in 1670, the English arrived. So <clears throat> the English um, started in 1670. The Hudson Bay Company was was created. The King of England gave a monopoly to the H Hudson Bay Co Company and stated that all the rivers that drained into the Hudson Bay would become Rupert's Land. And Rupert's Land was given to the Hudson Bay. So this was great for the fur trade. The Hudson Bay um, set up their fur trade posts where they would want and then the boat would come in into the bay and then they would trade and trade and trade and trade and trade and of course um, the rivers were a great way to um, to transport furs within Canada at the time so it was very easy to get to these forts based on the rivers it was actually and it was closer than Montreal and Quebec so the English and the First Nations, um, the difference between the French, because the French had the Cour de Bois, where the runners of the woods, so they would, the French would come to the, the First Nations. But the English made the First Nations come to them. Um, it led to less of a relationship compared to the French, because if you only see them to trade, you don't live with them, you don't get, you know, you don't need them. You just, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship where, where you're both getting benefits, and and once those benefits are done, you're you're kind of the relationship is over. So it was just it was a purely trading one, where the French were trying to convert them to English, or sorry, to uh, to Catholicism. They were trying to, um, they really, they cared a little bit more about the the First Nations people. So it it, it they the French had a much better relationship than the English with the First Nations. Um, the English also did not try to populate Canada. They were not there to populate Canada. Theirs was a 100% mercantilist system. It was not imperialism. It was more in, uh, 
mercantilist because it was based purely on trades. They they weren't care they didn't care about Canada. They all they wanted was the furs out of Canada. But because they were not trying to populate Canada, this allowed them to keep costs down so they could offer more for each trade. So if you have if England is, you know, um, asking for let, if you don't have to pay for roads, if you don't have to pay for different houses for different people so that they could bureaucratically run your nation, um, you don't have to pay for that. So things get a lot cheaper, a lot quicker. So it's much, much more uh, cheaper to run a fort than it is to run a city or a town because that fort, all you have to do is close up the doors and, and there it is, right? Get some food in there and instead of a city where you need a school you need a church you need a all these different things that people need so the french were not happy that the english were in uh, canada and they were because they were losing furs they were it was it was monetary mostly but and they hated each other from back in in europe there were different wars going on and they they really truly disliked each other now they were losing furs so the french had started to intercept traders which were heading to the forts and traded with them before they could get there. So if, if the river was going like that, going up and going to the fort over here, the French would just merely meet right here on the in the river and trade with the furs. So if you could go only half the distance and then come back, it would be a lot quicker and easier than trading at the fort. So some people were very loyal to the French knowing or to the English knowing that they would get a better price if they went to the English, but the the um, the cost benefit of of traveling the rest of the river was was not always was not always worth it. So often the the English lost um, business to the French, but the French could not police every river and they couldn't just put people there and wait to intercept their furs. So it was really a, it was a it was a chance waiting for those furs. Um, so the English still did pretty well as in, you know, despite this, the French also started to attack the forts and which caused more, more of a problem later on. Um, that's the show for, that's the slides. Hopefully you were following along in your book and this is the end of chapter, uh, three and chapter two combined. So yeah.